So you're looking at one of the most, I think, emotionally powerful images that we see all year, and it's called the Rotgen Pieta. Now, Pieta translates to pity or mercy. Pieta is Latin for those two terms. Uh, that is definitely a vocab term, and you want to put that into your context uh, for this piece. So here we have uh, an image from Germany made of wood, and it is an incredible image of Christ being taken off the cross. So why don't we start with context, and then we'll move on to the content, but it'll give you time to look at the image with and just seeing some of the details uh, in this. So context, up until this point of uh, where we are in the timeline in the Middle Ages, and this is coming into the, like, the very late Gothic period, uh, actually they call it the late medieval European era, but it's at the end of the Middle Ages. And typically Christ is shown uh, on the crucifix as weightless, not really suffering physically, he, his divine nature and divine self is more of the, what's communicated by artists. And that's known as the Christus triumphans, you know, which is the triumphant Christ. And now in the, in the Middle Ages, in the tail end of the Middle Ages, a different Christ appears. And it's definitely one who feels and looks more human. And so images of Christ on the cross, or in this case, after he's taken off the cross, uh, after he's dead, you have a Christ that has suffered, who physically shows the suffering and wounds in the body and how it's depicted. So it's a much different time period. Part of that could go come from the suffering that is going on in the era. Uh, you have famines, wars, uh, times of plague, you know, disease. And so people in just this time period in general have suffered. So artists, I think, feel more, um, it's more appropriate then to make Jesus a more relatable figure. And <clears throat> when you see Christ suffering, then you might think to yourself then, well, then what is my suffering compared to this? Christians believe that Christ dies for their sins. And then as a result of this crucifixion and sacrifice, that Christians will be reborn into an afterlife in heaven because of this act on the part of Christ and the sacrifice of his son by God. So it is the ultimate sacrifice. So sculptures or art pieces like this will then, it is meant to calm, provide hope, provide uh, you know, a connection in, in an interesting way because it is, is not necessarily a easy sculpture to look at. It is not beautiful in the traditional sense. It might be off-putting or upsetting, but it definitely, for people who are suffering physically or emotionally, would be something that they would connect with. And it would be used for prayer, contemplation, and to try to get a sense of hope and uh, an idea that life will be better. I might heal or maybe after death, there will be an end and a peace to the suffering. So during this time period in the Gothic era, um, and we'll probably have talked about this already with the Chartres Cathedral, that the Virgin Mary, in the Gothic period becomes this strong focus in art. She is the comforting figure during this time. You go to the mother to get, you know, uh, a hug when you're hurt or, you know, to get a hug when you feel scared. And so this loving, very accepting and nurturing figure of the Virgin Mary is a nice antidote to the scarier judgmental Jesus that was the focus in Romanesque art. So a real focus of her in art uh, and in culture starts during this time period. And it is known as a time in the Gothic period as the cult of the Virgin. 
So you will see her depicted often. Churches are dedicated to her. And here again, you have her reaction to her son's death. So this is the background context. Again, a time of suffering for multiple reasons, an end to the Christ who is crucified with no real sense of emotion or suffering. Now it's been replaced with a Christ who clearly has suffered, is very much the human part of him, and the Virgin Mary who's lost her son, you know, is devastated. So then for content, uh, a few things. For Jesus, you, know, you see the crown of thorns around his head and there's blood in red paint dripping down his head. His body is limp. There's no life whatsoever. In fact, you know, he's so thin, his arms, his waist, his whole body, his ribs showing, and he's just hanging there, this grown man who's in his 30s, just cradled across his mother's lap. And it harkens back. You can't help but think of all the images that have been made in the past of Christ with the infant or with Mary with the infant Jesus sitting on his on her lap. You know, when you think of that, the nurturing, the care, and now here where it ends up, the story goes, is quite compelling. And then the Virgin Mary is seated with him on her, you know, her son on her lap, and her face is just one of anguish. She's suffering emotionally, and her grief is real. It is intense, and she might be questioning, you know, why. Uh, and then not only are there bodies and facial expressions expressing emotion, but you see the what are called the stigmata, which are wounds of the crucifixion where his the nail went through his flesh to nail him to the cross. And you see it in his hands. You see it on his feet. These wounds that look like explosions, like fireworks. Uh, it's torn flesh. And the red um, paint would suggest the blood. And so, um, you know, the Mary image is what really gets to me because in other eras that have made the Virgin Mary, you know, holding her son after he's been crucified, you know, most famously Michelangelo's Pieta, the Virgin Mary is peaceful, young, just completely, I don't know if content's the right word, but peaceful, just always kind of comes across here, and there almost seems like an acceptance, but yet an, also a knowledge that the death is temporary, that he will be reborn. So this is a Virgin Mary that feels full of that knowledge and wisdom. This Virgin Mary, though, feels like she does not have that knowledge yet. And I'm showing you this close up because you can really see the texture of the paint and the wood. And I think wood being such a raw, organic, natural material is such a great tool, a great medium to showcase the raw emotions that are coming through with this one. So uh, I would say function for this piece, definitely religious and, you know, used again in prayer and meditation. So religious ritual perhaps as well. And I would say then, too, that formal qualities here, you could use color, and color helps convey you know, the items of the, of the narrative of his death, you know, the gruesome nature of his suffering with the red from the blood, but also the texture of the wood and that kind of texture, that raw texture of the wood helps to convey the raw sense of emotion and the anguish on both of their bodies, but especially the Virgin Mary's face. So that's it for, again, the Rotgen Pieta.